Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Crystal. I'm from Denmark, and I recently graduated with a master's in sustainable heritage management from Aarhus University. And this summer, I had the amazing opportunity to intern at San Antonio Missions National Historical Park in San Antonio, Texas. And here you can see the four missions. Um, the Spanish colonial mission complexes along the San Antonio River, south of downtown San Antonio. Um, and the park also encompasses farmlands, residences, a ranch located south of Floresville, and a water distribution system um, known as the Sequias, and it also includes the only working Spanish colonial aqueduct in the U.S., all of which are connected to the San Antonio River, which played a crucial role in the location of the missions. Um, the missions were established by Franciscan missionaries uh, in the 18th century as part of the Spanish crown's efforts to colonize and evangelize the indigenous peoples of New Spain and integrate them into the Spanish colonial society. San Antonio Missions National Historical Park is run by the National Park Service in partnership with the Catholic Archdiocese of South Texas who maintain non-secular structures which are still used for religious purposes. The National Park Service also cooperates with multiple landowners to facilitate public access to the site, such as the San Antonio River Authority, the city of San Antonio, and Bear County. And it really highlights the many different stakeholders involved in the park. Moreover, in 2015, the San Antonio missions, including the fifth mission located in downtown San Antonio, the Alamo, was designated a World Heritage Site for its outstanding architectural and archaeological structures which demonstrate the inventive interchange between indigenous peoples, missionaries, and colonizers, which led to a permanent change for all, but especially the indigenous people shift from hunter-gatherers to successful, settled agriculturalists within a generation. And during my internship, I had the privilege to learn both how the park runs as a national park and as a world heritage site through the National Park Service and how these two statuses are managed differently um, and this provided insight into the National Park Service as an organization and the variety of natural and cultural resources within a single park and the different methods uh, used to safeguard these resources. During my internship, I worked with the Integrated Resources Division of the National Park Service, where I focused on museum management and care. Uh, the park's museum collection contains more than one million artifacts and historical documents, and is the largest collection of Spanish colonial mission artifacts in the United States. The collection provides a tangible link to the missions and people before, during, and after the mission period. It includes historical and archaeological objects such as coins, projectile points, ceramics, jewelry, and architectural elements, as well as historic photographs and maps. My main project was to develop the park's first museum housekeeping plan, which is a core baseline document within the National Park Service for all sites housing museum collections. And for this project, I worked very closely with the Pirates Museum curator, Melissa Hurtado. The term museum housekeeping covers many different tasks with the purpose to minimize deterioration of museum objects through careful handling and cleaning. Agents of deterioration of museum objects include uh, exposure to light, incorrect temperature, and relative humidity level, um, pollutants past physical forces, such as incorrect handling or packaging, um, fire, water theft, and vandalism, as well as custodial neglect. Uh, so museum housekeeping is more than dust and cleaning. It includes regular inspection and monitoring of potential adverse effects, especially temperature, humidity, and pest activity. So in other words, the museum housekeeping plan is an integral part of a preventative conservation program, which aims to lengthen the life of objects through consistent and high level care. I first approached this task from a research oriented perspective to learn more about preventative conservation and museum housekeeping through researching other housekeeping plans in the US and especially in Texas, as the hot and humid climate may affect the inside environment in historic structures like commission buildings where cracks provide an entrance into the outside, to the inside. Um, I also researched recent publications on preventative conservation techniques and standards to help ensure the housekeeping plan not only follow the National Park Service standards, but also align with current research in the field 
and this has an ongoing process throughout the project. And another significant part of the project was visiting the different locations in the park holding museum collections to assess current conditions, what could be improved, and to get to know the sites to be able to create an effective plan. In the park, museum collections are housed in seven locations, which include exhibit spaces at San Jose Visitor Center, um, which is the top right picture, uh, which is located in a modern structure. Then we have exhibit spaces at Mission San Juan, which is the picture to the left, and Mission Espada, which is the bottom right, which are located in historic structures. Um, and the last locations are in four cold storage units. So we have three very distinct locations which require different considerations and tasks tailored to each site. So for each site, I created a spreadsheet that would list the different tasks that had to be done according to the collection held at the site and the different um, storage or exhibits for them, um, which would detail the frequency of each task, whether it was weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-quarterly, or annually. Um, I also had uh, an amazing supervisor in Novosa who arranged for us to visit the Center for Archaeological Research and the Witte Museum in San Antonio to talk uh, to and learn from other professionals with experience in museum housekeeping and integrated pest management. In particular, we had a good and constructive discussion on pest management, which also ties into another project I got to do, which was to draft a chapter on pest management in a museum which would be included in the overall integrated pest management for the park. Um, and I learned a lot about different pests and different control actions. Not all pests are museum pests, as not all are directly harmful to collections, though any pest usually indicates an underlying pro problem and some action should be taken. Um, but there are different procedures on how to handle pest infestation when it comes to museum collections versus non-museum collections. And overall, these projects taught me a lot about working with museum collections and how important the environment surrounding an object is, and not just its immediate context, but the entire room and even the building that it's located in. And it's really opened my eyes to the possibilities of working with museum collections. I was also very lucky that my internship was flexible and allowed me to spend time gaining new skills and insights working with other professionals in the park. Uh, for example, I got to spend a day with the masons where I learned how to mix mortar and to repoint a section of the wall in a larger effort to stabilize the wall surrounding the compound admission San Juan. Uh, and in photos, so you can see me learn how to, to repoint. Uh, I also spent a day working with professionals from the University of Texas, San Antonio, to test three different remote sensing techniques to best measure the extent of the tuber stone in the subsurface of the construction. Research that will be carried out for climate change vulnerability assessment. And lastly, I also got to work with archaeologists um, where I helped carry out archaeological screening, screening during the excavation of the test pit to determine whether the reconstructed walls in 1930 was built directly on top of the original walls at Mission San Jose. And it was really interesting to see firsthand the different artifacts found at the site. And overall, it was a really great experience to do some hands-on work um, trying out these different um, skills. And outside of my internship, I was also able to explore the city of San Antonio from the river walk in downtown to cycling along the river between the missions. Really beautiful. Um, I also got to see the Japanese tea garden, the Tower of Americas. Um, which provided great views of the city, um, and also just wandering around the beautiful King William Historic District, which I was lucky enough to live in. Um, it was also an opportunity to experience American and Texan culture. San Antonio is a city of gastronomy, and I've had so much delicious food, especially Tex-Mex, and my colleagues have been very good at taking me to all their favorite places and introducing me to important cultural experiences, such as going to rodeo, which was a really fun experience. Um, and watching the 4th of July fireworks, uh, Precious and I also attended the 
Stars and Stripes Parade in downtown San Antonio. Um, one thing I never learned to understand, though, was the need for all air-conditioned spaces to be super cold. Um, I also learned the true meaning of a car-oriented city, uh, and I'm very, very grateful to Melissa for inviting me to state parks and rivers outside of San Antonio, and of course to the mandatory Barclays visit to buy some beaver merchandise. I also managed a visit to Austin and Houston, so I think I got to see and experience a good variety of things and places in this enormous state. I could not have asked for a better internship experience this summer, and especially as an emerging professional, it has been incredibly valuable to gain hands-on experience. So a huge thank you to World Heritage USA for making this opportunity possible, to the National Park Service in San Antonio for being an amazing host. Everyone has been so nice and happy to share their expertise, and especially a thank you to everyone in the Integrated Resources Division for making me a part of the team and for making it a fun learning experience. So thank you.